And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Cheap Ludes and I am back with another video. So the market in NBA 2K21 my team is interesting. Um, especially when it comes to limited and just everything that's going on. So I got majority of my stuff done. I still have like my week groups two and three stuff to do, but I got like Jaron Jackson and all that done. I've been playing TTO pretty much exclusively, so... But there's a lot of MT to be made on cards right now. Not so much when it comes to... Oh yeah, I got 20 tokens. Woo! Trust me, those will come in clutch later. But there's a lot of MT to be made on certain cards right now. If you guys are not aware of what's going on in Limited, I did do a Limited Tips video. Go check that out. But you cannot use cards that either A, have the Clamps Badge, or that the Clamps Badge can be applied to. So looking at cards like that... You're going to be looking into some serious MT. Like, if you have a Pink Diamond Tracy McGrady, you can still get 50k for this card. Probably closer to around 40, but if you don't have him locked in, it's not a bad idea to go and get 40k for this card. He'll never be worth this much again unless they do another challenge in that kind of vein. Same with Dino. We've seen Dino's price basically stagnate. It just kind of depends. Some cards are stagnant. It just depends how overpriced they are. And to be honest, a lot of the best cards for Limited this week are reward cards in the first place, like, um, not Purvis Short, but like John ja Morant, Gil Goodrich is really good, but we are seeing some cards kind of uptick in value if you're looking for the Limited sticker. Like, Blake Griffin is one of the best cards in Limited this weekend, and his price doesn't really reflect that. Like, if you're having issues in Limited, it's not a bad idea to go spend two or so K on this Blake Griffin card because he is that good, as you saw in my video. I enjoy this card a lot. Kyle Korver, he's not that expensive either, and honestly, he's a really good card for Limited as well. We've seen a lot of the prices for the Limited cards fall. Now, when it comes to Memphis Grizzlies power forwards, let's take a look and see if their prices dropped at all because there's not a lot of them. And you can still get three or so K for an Emerald Jared Jackson, which you'll be able to buy for 800 you know, in a couple weeks. Uh, in a couple weeks, in a few days, what am I saying? Uh, Jonte Porter, last I checked, was actually pretty expensive as well. Yeah, he's there's not even many buy it nows. There's one buy it now for 4000 2000 You can get two Gs for this card, though. I don't recommend selling them because <clears throat> it looks like 2K is phasing out gold and silver cards out of packs. Something to kind of take into consideration before you start selling cards. Like, realistically. You can still get four Gs for this card, but I think, like, his value isn't really worth it. So I wouldn't sell like John Tay Porter or Tillman, but if you have like Jaron Jackson or any of them from the beginning, uh, beginning the 20 group, like they're still going for a decent amount too. But once again, like you'll probably not be able to get this John Tay Porter card for this price for a while. I mean, this is about what he's going to be going for. So it's not like you're really coming up. It's not like you can sell him now and go get him later is what I'm trying to say. Now, that being said, if you have some of, like, the season tip-off guys, like, where Zach Randolph was going for, like, a decent amount, yeah. If you have the Zach Randolph card, like I do, like, I'm about to just get rid of him for 10k. Whoa, 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 what are you doing, sir? Ha, yeah, okay. No. Bad move. He's going for about 10k, and somebody was selling him for 2500 so I'm gonna go ahead and change that for him. Not even trying to snipe out here in this video, but sometimes it just kind of happens like that. I'm feeling generous. I'll put him up for 95. Now it's actually I saw one going for like 7,900. So eight Gs. Let's do eight Gs. See if it sells. If it doesn't, I'm not really out that much MT, so it's fine. If you look at some of the other guys that <clears throat> have had their price affected by the content drop that we got, like. A lot of cards are back on the rise, like DeMar DeRozan's back to what he was normally going for, Dirk is going for about what he's going for, why does he just not want me to search for, for Dirk sometimes, I swear. He's actually down a little bit, I still think he's, he goes for around 150 though. Let's actually look at the cards in question. Why did I go to out of position, what, was, what did we get last time? Did we get idols? Yeah, we got idols, I couldn't even remember. Carmelo Anthony. Uh, he's calmed down. He was going for a really high price before. I really do not think he is worth this price, if I'm being honest. Like, 
he's probably going to end up going for 500k and i really don't think carmelo on current gen is worth that now on next gen he's totally worth that price i think at least at this stage in the game still it's a bad move to pay 500k for a card but it's hard to really tell people that when you consistently spend 500k on Tracy McGrady every time he gets a new card. So, if you're a big Mellow fan, I totally understand. Chris Bosch is, from what I understand, very good on next gen. He's pretty good on current gen as well, but he moves kind of sluggishly. He moves similar to, like, Garnett. Like, Garnett kind of feels like he doesn't move very well, and Bosch is honestly kind of the same. Now, is he worth 300k? I mean, probably, in the grand scheme of things, compared to what else is out there. But I would hold off. I think his price is going to go down a lot, especially because he's not a lock-in card. So if you're interested in him, I'd hold off. Billy Owens is such a weird card. Like, he's very, very good. You can get him for around 50 or 60k. I'll go look up exactly how low he is. He's six foot eight, but his player battle just looks so much smaller than that, and I don't really understand why. He's a nightmare, though. Like, he's super good. Damian Lillard's jump shot works really well in, like, a big guard, and he plays the two guard. He's nice, man. Um, there's nothing wrong with this card. 97 driving dunk, like 88 or 89 three-pointer with a good release. 86 ball handle, you'd like it to be a little higher, but he works better as like a 3 and D cone anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal, and he moves well enough. But he's good. There's nothing wrong with Billy Owens. He's got a great badge count as far as like upgradable badges. I mean, he has 37 Hoff badges. Like, he's fire. Stuff you might want to get him, like Dimer, if you handle the ball with your two-guard, Space Creator, Stop and Go, Deadeye, Flexible, he definitely needs all those. So it's not like he's without issues, but he's a good card nonetheless. I'm going to wait for his price to calm down a little bit, and then I'm going to go pick him up. Darren Williams is going for about 30 k right now, and I can say with absolute certainty that this card is <laughs> way too undervalued, just like Rondo. He's a small point guard, and they did change his release. He doesn't have the base 22 or Rex Chapman base that he had before, which I think if they would have gave him Kirk Heinrich's release... Like, I firmly believe they messed up and they weren't supposed to give Kirk Heinrich Darren Williams release. I think it was supposed to be opposite. But if they gave him the same release that Kirk Heinrich had, Darren Williams would be an incredible point guard, but they didn't. His release is still okay, it's just not as good. But if you're looking for an elite point guard for 30k, Darren Williams is complete. He's just a little bit small, but badge-wise, he's incredibly good. He sticks defense, too. It's just when you run into, like, a Luka or a Magic or a Kobe... He's going to have issues. He does have that Hall of Fame steady on current, so something to take into consideration. As far as badges like he needs, I mean, he's relatively complete. He's not a dunker, so Showtime's really not that necessary. Slippery off ball if you plan on running like a two guard that's just a bigger point guard. Hakeem Warwick. Hakeem Warwick's going for about 14k right now. He does have issues, do not get me wrong. But he's got a really good badge count. He's one of the best defensive cards in this game, uh, at least at the pink diamond tier. He can shoot relatively well. I like his jump shot a lot, actually. I'm surprised, too, because I didn't think I was going to. But clutch shooter, dead eye, like gold range. He's missing flexible, I believe. Yeah, he's missing flexible, green machine, hot start, and on next gen blinders. And some finishing badges, like slithery finisher would be nice. He dunks over everyone, though. Elite defensive tendencies. He's got very good stats in general. The 84 three-pointer is a little troubling, but you got a coach in a shoe, he's just fine. Great tendencies. If you're looking for a lockdown 3 and D guy that can also attack the rim and dunk, I personally think he's a little bit better than Andrew Wiggins. At, at the small forward, that is. But that's a personal preference thing. Mo Peterson is elite as well. He's going to be more of an offensive-minded guy. He's got a nice jump shot. He plays pretty competent defense, but he's going to be able to be a lights-out shooter, especially over on Next Gen. He's not the best offensively, but if you're looking for someone who's around the 10 to 15K range, can play the two guards, got a big body, and can shoot lights out from three, Mo Peterson is a good option for you. But if you're a rim runner, I don't think Mo Peterson really helps you that much. Do I really need to talk about Kirk Heinrich? He's 3K. It's Kirk Heinrich, dude. He's got Rex Chapman release. He's basically, I don't want to say better Bob Sura, but he's up there. He's like, no, he's definitely better Bob Sura. Bob Sura is a better dunker, I will say. But Kirk Heinrich is nasty. Like, straight up, he plays excellent defense. 97 steel, 95 perimeter defense. 96 speed. He's got the 85 driving dunk, which isn't ideal, but it'll, it'll do in a pinch. 99 pass intercept, 99 on ball steal. Captain Kirk plays with his heart. Sorry, I get excited about Captain Kirk, man. 
but he's got great defensive badges. He's got good offensive badges. He's one of the most complete diamond point guards in the game. Probably him and Halliburton would be the two, I would say. Um, I wish he had Hall of Fame flexible, but he does not. But I will say that Rex Chapman base that he has, honestly, in and of itself is basically flexible release. Like, you can apply flexible to him, which is definitely helpful, but that release in, like, in itself makes more whites than almost any release in this entire game as is. Him and Ray Allen base. So, you throw a gold flexible on that, he's going to make as many whites, if not more, than like someone with base 29 and Hall of Fame flex flexible. Not even kidding. Where's Michael Sweetney at? I don't really have too much to say about Michael Sweetney. I mean, he's a 6'8 center. Little pudgy guy. Uh, I was talking to my Nick fan friends, and they weren't even hyped on this card, so that's not usually a good sign. <laughs> he's okay. I mean, should you rush out to go buy him? No. Is he there if you want him? Yeah. Let's check badges, because I think some badges are going to be a little expensive. Like, if I'm not mistaken, Flexible has kind of seen an uptick in price. I don't think Gold has. Nah, Gold hasn't, but yeah, you don't expect it from Gold anyway. Where is Bronze Deadeye? Bronze Deadeye, I think, is about the same, yeah. About 9k. I don't think I have any Bronze Flexibles right now. Yeah, I'm really going to have to go buy Bronze Flexible. That's unfortunate. Let's see what it is going for. Flexible. Color Bronze. Oh, this isn't, this isn't bad at all. I thought it was going to be way more expensive. I definitely got to grab him to put it on Kirk Heinrich. Captain Kirk, who I've only used a little bit. Can I get one for 4K? Can I, can I, can I? No, but I can get one for 4,700. Fine with me. Yeah, 48, whatever. Perfect. Let's see what silver's up to. Is it down in price? Silver is expensive. Wow. You're really going to gonna lure me in with the bronze and then tax me on the silver, huh? Okay. Well, if you have any silver uh, flexible release, you're going to be coming up pretty hard on it because it's a little bit expensive right now. I'll wait for it to calm down before I come back and buy one for Kirk Heinrich. So, anyways, ooh, got a bunch of stuff here. It has been your boy, Cheap Ludes, and I am going to stream later tonight, um, probably around 6 or 7 p.m. Central Time. So, let me know in the comments what time works better for everybody. And look at that. I made 8K on Zach Randolph. Fantastic. Check out all my other videos. Check out my description for all the rest of my stuff. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. If you want to support the channel by purchasing a membership, that would be sick. Other than that, you know I'll always be here ready to give out tips. So, peace out.